What's up, my comic comrades? It's only a matter of time before the X-Men make their debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In fact, we just got a massive tease for the mutants in the Ms. Marvel finale when they played the X-Men theme as we learned that Ms. Marvel is a mutant and not an inhuman. And more recently, we got another huge tease when an article was shown on a website in She-Hulk Episode 2 that hinted at the existence of Wolverine in the MCU. So the X-Men are bound to join the MCU eventually, and with that being the case, we thought it'd be fun to make a list of the 10 X-Men characters we think absolutely need to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Of course, there's a a lot of fan favorites on this list because we gotta start off strong. Also, this list is in no particular order. On a separate note, we're very excited to announce a partnership with the incredible people at Charity Water to bring clean, drinkable, life-sustaining water to the people of Zimbabwe. We'll tell you more about how you can help us accomplish that in just a bit. But first, let's start off with the 10 X-Men we want to see the most in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. First up is Wolverine, who as we already mentioned, was teased in a recent episode of She-Hulk. To be specific, the headline we see reads, Man fights with metal claws in bar brawl, which is not a subtle hint for Wolverine, but it's also not 100% confirmation. Anyway, Wolverine is single-handedly the most popular X-Men member, so if any of the X-Men are gonna be in the MCU, it's Wolverine. He's one of the toughest raw savage fighters in all of Marvel, especially with his healing factor, letting him go into fights head first without having to worry about injuries. Not to mention his adamantium lace skeleton and claws literally making him a mutant killing machine. So I'm more than happy that we'll be seeing him in the MCU, but whoever ends up playing Wolverine has some big shoes to fill. Hugh Jackman gave us an iconic interpretation of the character. Teens in the early 2000s literally grew up with him as Wolverine in the X-Men movies. However, the MCU does have the opportunity to finally give us a comic accurate Wolverine. Because as great as Hugh Jackman was as the character, it was far from comic accurate. In the comics, Wolverine is short, stocky, and wears a bright yellow and blue costume, or a more earthy yellow and brown costume. But whatever Marvel does, it will be exciting to see the MCU's take on the character. Next up, we have none other than Scott Summers, better known as Cyclops, the leader of the X-Men. He's yet another staple and icon of the X-Men being a founding member of the team. He's also a third of the X-Men love triangle between Cyclops, Wolverine, and Jean Grey. Scott's character has been given so much depth over the years along with being portrayed as everything from a boy scout all the way to essentially a jerk who only cares about mutants. But no matter how you slice it, no X-Men lineup would be complete without the mutant whose eyes fire concussive blasts. Plus, if they'll eventually be bringing the full X-Men team to the MCU, they kind of have to have Cyclops there from the beginning. His interaction with his mentor Professor X and growing into his leadership role are important story beats and character developments for both Cyclops and Professor X. Hell, they're important for the X-Men team in general. Cyclops is pretty much in every X-Men comic story and is a very important character in the majority of them, so if Marvel wants to adapt any iconic X-Men story from the comics, they need Cyclops in the forefront. I know I'm hoping for an Avengers vs. X-Men movie, but of course that's a story that requires years of setup. Hopefully it's something we get down the line. Now we move on to Jean Grey, one of the original five X-Men and a founding member of the team, much like Cyclops. She's a key component to any X-Men team, especially for the MCU, because of just how important she is to some of the most iconic X-Men stories that Marvel probably wants to adapt to film. Not only is Jean an Omega-level mutant with telepathy and telekinetic abilities, but she's also by far the most famous host for the Phoenix Force. Speaking of the Phoenix Force, it would be awesome if they adapted the Phoenix Saga into the MCU. I know they loosely adapted the story in X-Men Last Stand and again in the Dark Phoenix film, but let's be honest, honest here. Let's just say they were the bootleg versions of the Phoenix Saga. And I hope the MCU gives us an officially licensed version, if you know what I'm saying. I even want to see Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Wolverine have a love triangle all over again. That was one of my favorite aspects from the X-Men animated series and the original X-Men films. Definitely something they should continue for the soon-to-be next generation of X-Men fans. To summarize, Jean Grey is one of the most badass X-Men in X-Men history, and we'd love to see her in the MCU. Another member of the team I would love to see in the MCU who we only saw briefly in the Fox X-Men franchise is Angel. He's yet another founding member of the X-Men, being one of the original five, and he's called Angel because of his angel-like wings. So obviously his wings allow him to fly, but they're also incredibly strong, allowing him to lift at least an additional 200 pounds. He uses his wings as essentially an extra set of arms, and his wings are able to break bones and throw people, along with Angel having heightened strength, speed, agility, reflexes, and eyesight. So besides him being just an all-around iconic X-Men member, I'd like for Marvel to introduce him right away so they have the breathing room to set up an Archangel plotline. For the uninitiated, Angel in the comics would eventually be twisted into a weapon of Apocalypse, turning him into the utter badass Archangel. Yes, we already saw Archangel in X-Men Apocalypse, but like, are we satisfied with that interpretation? Ben Foster also played Angel in Last Stand, but they really didn't do much with that either. I'd know I'd much prefer to see what Marvel and Feige would do with the character. 
Following up Angel, we have Hank McCoy, aka Beast, yet another one of the original five X-Men and easily a fan favorite. Make no mistake, I want the big blue haired version. I know we already got the blue haired Beast in the Fox X-Men, but what can I say? There's a lot of Fox X-Men movies, so they've covered a lot of ground. The execution, however, wasn't always the best. It's really not possible to accurately represent comic characters like Beast or Hulk with just the guy in a suit. And both iterations of the character we already saw on the screen showed us why that's the case. Nowadays, he will look awesome as a full CGI character like Marvel did with Thanos and Hulk. In any case, he has an incredible intellect along with possessing beast-like strength and agility. I mean, he literally swings around like a beast. He's also, in my opinion, kind of like the heart and soul of the X-Men, being kind of thoughtful, but at the same time, you really don't want to piss him off. Seriously, imagine a completely CGI blue-haired beast bouncing off the walls left and right, then picking up Wolverine and chucking him at people to slash through them. That potential alone is why the MCU could do a way better job than Fox did with the character, especially if they give us interactions between Beast and Tom Holland Spider-Man, which I really want. That would be amazing. Obviously, we all love us some mutant superheroes, but in the real world, superheroes look quite a bit different. And the great people at Charity Water are proof of that. As I mentioned earlier, we've partnered with Charity Water for their annual September Stream for Clean campaign, where all of us have a chance to come together as a community community and raise funds to help those in desperate need of clean water. Many people don't realize that there's over 770 million people on the planet who don't have access to clean and safe drinking water. That is nearly 1 in 10 people worldwide. To put that in perspective, that is twice the population of the United States. Just as shocking is the fact that diseases from dirty water kill more people every year than all forms of violence, including war. But the good news is, is that it's a very solvable problem. And this is where you could become one of those real life superheroes. Charity Water's 2022 goal is to raise $500,000 to bring clean and safe water to over 10,000 people in Zimbabwe. And the goal we've set for our variant community is to raise 5,000 of that, which will bring clean water to 100 people in Zimbabwe. With over 2.4 million subscribers strong in the variant nation, we could hit that goal and then some of everyone who watches this video just gives one dollar. We have the ability to change a lot of lives for the better, so let's join forces and do that. Just click the link in the description and give as much as you can, and we'll be doing the same. Believe me, you'll be glad you did. Now, of course, we wouldn't leave out the creator and founder of the X-Men, Professor Charles Xavier. This one's just a no-brainer. There is no way you could have an X-Men in the MCU and not have Professor X, the creator and founder of the team. If you weren't aware, the reason why he created the X-Men and the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters in the first place is because he had a dream of peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans, and his X-Men is the driving force he uses to hopefully one day achieve that peace. Yes, I'm aware we've already seen the Patrick Stewart version of Professor X in the MCU as part of the Illuminati in the Multiverse of Madness, but I have a feeling he's going to be recast for the 616 universe. Nonetheless, all I need to say is there is no way you could introduce the X-Men in any form of media without Professor X. In fact, Giancarlo Esposito recently said he would like to play Professor X in the MCU. What do you guys think? Would you like to see that? Let us know. Next on the list, I want to see Gambit. We briefly saw a version of this character in the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, which quite frankly is one of the worst comic book movies of all time. That is not a hot take. That is just a fact. Then for the longest time, Channing Tatum was attached to the character to play him in a solo movie, but that never came to fruition. So Gambit, one of the most beloved X-Men of all time, has yet to get his due on the big screen. And with the X-Men being introduced into the MCU, there's a massive possibility we may finally get one of the most beloved mutants as part of the X-Men roster. For anyone not familiar with the character, Gambit possesses the ability to change potential energy and objects into kinetic energy, which in turn causes them to explode. He most famously uses this ability with a deck of playing cards, throwing kinetic energy charged cards at his opponents. So he can essentially make anything a flying bomb. I also hope we get a Jim Lee 90s look for Gambit if the MCU decides to introduce him. Seriously, that look is iconic for the character, so hopefully it happens. Next character I really want to see is Bishop, the mutant from the 22nd century who traveled all the way to the past, becoming a member of the X-Men and even a member of the Uncanny X-Force. Again, like most X-Men characters, we did see an interpretation of Bishop in the Fox X-Men universe, but he was barely utilized, like at all. So I would like to see him up front and center because quite frankly, he's one of the coolest X-Men. His powers are sort of similar to Gambit, but I think a bit better. Bishop has the ability to absorb and redirect any kinetic energy that is used against him or that is even released in his general area. He also has the distinction of being the first black male member to join the X-Men. Seeing him on the team in the MCU would just make my child heart so happy as he was one of my favorite characters from the 90s X-Men animated series. 
Next, we have one of the baddest women in all of comic books, and that, of course, is Storm. She is hands down one of the strongest mutants ever, being an Omega-level mutant with the ability to manipulate the energies of the natural world. Layman's terms, she can control the weather, meaning she could flood any country, have hurricanes sweep through any civilization. Heck, she can create car-sized hail and use them as boulders to drop wherever she wants. She's a force to be reckoned with, is what I'm saying. Of course, she's been played by the great Halle Berry in the previous X-Men films, but imagine Storm in the MCU with the visual effects technology we have today. Day. She would make for some of the coolest fight scenes and visual effects we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe thus far. So besides just being an all-around dope character and staple for the X-Men, I truly want to see her in the MCU because her powers would make for some of the coolest eye candy we've seen from Marvel in a long time. And last for the list, we have Kurt Wagner, aka Nightcrawler, a staple X-Men character along with being a former leader of Excalibur. Excalibur is basically the X-Men of Britain. So introducing Nightcrawler into the MCU could mean they could eventually give us an offshoot of the X-Men in Excalibur. But back to Nightcrawler, he has one of the best scenes in all of superhero movies in the opening sequence of X2. The problem is they didn't do much with Nightcrawler for the rest of the film. And even in the more recent X-Men films, they still didn't use them nearly as much as they should have, which I personally find extremely lame because again, he's a staple member of the X-Men. X-Men. His teleportation ability gives room for some dope possibilities, like in X2 where he was teleporting around the White House. He was taking out guards, running through hallways, and confusing Secret Service, making them think there was more than one person. So imagine all these years later with technology being way more advanced, that junk would be crazy. Plus, they never showed us that he's an extremely skilled swordsman, which would be awesome to see him teleporting in and out while dueling someone with the sword. But that wraps up our list of the 10 X-Men characters we really want to see in the MCU. Yes, we've seen a live action interpretation of pretty much much every character on this list already from the Fox X-Men movies, but most of them I feel weren't utilized nearly enough and have so much more potential for the big screen. And of course there are so many more X-Men characters that would be awesome to see in the MCU. You still have Rogue, Iceman, Colossus, Kitty Pride, Cable, Jubilee, the list goes on for days. All being iconic members of the team. And we didn't even touch on the villains like Sabretooth, Mr. Sinister, Omega Red, Lady Deathstrike, Magneto, the list goes on. Actually let us know if you would like us to do a villains version of this list. But what did you think of our list? Do you agree or have your own list of X-Men characters you really want to see in the MCU? Let us know in the comments. First up for the week of September 7th, we have a comic book from yours truly, Astonishing Times. That's right, the comic I co-wrote and co-created is getting a trade through Dark Horse and Comixology Originals collecting the first five issues. It's a love letter to the superhero genre that we made just for you, so we really hope you pick up a copy at your local bookstore or wherever books are sold. Next up, we have Batman issue 127. With brutal efficiency, Failsafe hunts the Dark Knight, leaving a trail of injured heroes. Batman retreats to the manor as he prepares for a final assault. Will the last few surprises he has in store be enough? Now we have Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths issue 4. Spinning out of the pages of The Flash, the heroes have learned the secret of Pariah's new worlds, but at what cost does this knowledge come? And what can they even do with this information, or even worse, perhaps Pariah in the Great Darkness want them to know? Here we have Flashpoint Beyond issue 5. The clockwork killer's identity is finally revealed as the dust settles after a showdown at Arkham Asylum. But as we learn the truth behind how the clockwork killer came to be, Thomas is faced with a reality-altering choice. And finally we have Spawn issue 333. Al is alone, allies have abandoned him, new threats are emerging, and his mission is in doubt. Is this really the end? And that's going to bring today's episode to a close, but if you like this episode, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, it helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you next time when I talk about all things comics.